I'm Scott Allen Miller. It is the 19th of March, 2023, and this is my vlog of daily life living in Leon, Nicaragua. Today we're going to be talking a little bit about what we did during the day and a lot about the terminology of Americans and United Statesians and all those things because someone brought it up on the channel and it's actually a really good discussion to have. We're going to talk about it. First of all, on today's show, I'm just gonna point out, I'm in an empty parking garage. That's why I'm here, because it's a really windy day and very bright. So I'm in a spot where I'm actually getting decent light on my face, uh, and the wind is not completely blowing out the microphone, and I just kind of needed to do that because it's so windy I can't go anywhere else. I can't go for a walk or anything, you won't be able to hear me. So that's why I'm doing it here. This is just a handy place that I'm able to record. Uh, it's very convenient and uh, this is actually unused. Like there's no one who puts a car over here. So it's really kind of cool that I have an empty uh, parking garage that I can just use whenever I need to. Um, so that's, that's really handy. Uh, I, I forgot to mention this two days ago. So um, this is, uh, we got the TV mounted on Friday for the girls in their room, uh, and it's on the wall, so they've been needing that. So, so Chepe came over and got that mounted, and I just wanted to show where that is uh, and mention it to everybody that, uh, uh, that we finally got that. It's adorable that the cat's on there. All right, this is the new TV set up in their rooms. It's going to be so much more convenient. They get air conditioning, and they love watching TV together and with the cat. So I just wanted to show it to you. And they're really excited that it's there. It really makes their lives just so much easier having that TV. So I wanted to wanted to throw that out there uh, before I before I forgot uh, because I took the chance to to film it and show it and and even got the cat. All right. So it came up this discussion of should we be saying because because obviously uh, if you watch my if you watch anything right people refer to people from the United States as Americans. And the question is, well, aren't all people from the Americas Americans? And this is a tough question because we all grapple with this. So the, the quick answer is yes, all people from the Americas are Americans. Are they called that? No, absolutely never are they actually called that. No one refers to themselves that way, at least not broadly. Um, and the term American is the official term for people from the United States. So it, that is what you're supposed to call them. It does pose problems, but there's is, digging into this problem. It's far more complex than you might think. So first of all, every country that is not the United States in the Americas is part of Latin America. Now I know what you're going to say, but no, Canada is not Latin America, but it is. The term Latin America referred to Canada before any other country. Quebec specifically as the French speaking portion of Canada is Latin in, as a derivative. The concept of a Latin American language or person started with Quebec. Over time, it then became applied to all Latin derivative language based countries. So everywhere, I said everywhere uh, except for the United States, the United States and Belize and, and um, I believe Suriname, right? There's, there's tiny little exceptions, but all of it by and large, including Canada and Mexico, is Latin America. This is very confusing because Puerto Rico is generally called Latin America, but it's part of the United States. Well, they say, well, but it's, it's very Hispanic, but so is Texas and California, and they used to be Mexico. So is Mexico not Latin America? Well, it is. Well, then why are those places not Latin America? Well, why are people who were Mexican no longer Latin American? Is it something that goes away? Is the United States a taint that takes away your Latin Americanness? Is anyone who moves from Mexico not Latin American? This is a, actually a complex thing that Americans have to grapple with because uh, most of the United States was part of what is now considered Latin America, but most people don't consider anyone who's become American to be Latin American anymore. So in the reverse, so we have the problem of calling Americans Americans. We also have the problem of who is Latin American. And many Latin Americans want to exclude Brazil, even though it's the largest Latin American country. And almost all want to exclude Canada, even though it was the first Latin American country, the, the one that created the or the, for whom the term was created. So it's all these things are difficult. And coming from the United States, being an American, one of the things that we have a real struggle with is using the term African. 
Technically, you would think African should refer to anyone who comes from Africa. However, in much of America, they only use the term to refer to about two-thirds of the people who come from Africa. And the people who are coming from Africa that are counted as Africans aren't the ones who come from the actual country of Africa, which today is known as Tunisia, but at a time, the term Africa only referred to Tunisia. It was later that the name of that country was changed to Tunisia, and people started to kind of just sloppily refer to the entire continent as Africa, and now it's stuck. But so, of all people, only those in Tunisia, uh, in Tunis, sorry, the city is Tunisia, in the state of Tunis, the country of Tunis, only those have an undisputed ability to be called Africans. They have uh, quite a bit of claim of saying, well, people from the rest of Africa aren't real Africans because that's the continent of Africa, not the country of Africa, and that it's being called Africa is a linguistic sloppiness, right? Africa is just a physical place. And so, and because there's no jurisdiction over the continent, the fact that everyone refers to the continent as Africa is always convention, never a nationality. That gets really complicated. The same thing with the Americas. Not everyone recognizes them as the Americas and no one has jurisdiction over the Americas as a general thing. And so what makes those people Americans? Generally, when we use terms like that, we use national terms, but we don't always. And the big example is, of course, Europeans. And that's what was brought up in the example was, well, when people come from Europe, we refer to them as Europeans, but there isn't any country of Europe to call Europeans, except there is, there's the European Union. And we refer to those people as Europeans, but we also refer to people who are not from the European Union as Europeans. Except we don't when they're from the UK anymore, but we used to. And sometimes we do. So even that term is very fuzzy. <sighs> There's no good answers here. The point is not to tell you what an answer is. The point is to, to make it clear how complicated this conversation is. That there isn't any uh, defining who is an American, any defining uh, who is Latin American. Uh, North Americans are even in dispute. If you're from the United States, then Nicaraguans are North Americans. But if you're from Nicaragua, you are not and North American refers to US, Canada, and Mexico, and they're lumped together. Uh, Central America is sometimes considered its own continent, and in many times, all three continents together, North, Central, and South, are just considered America, and a lot of countries don't recognize that they are separate continents. So this gets increasingly complicated. But importantly, everybody in the region uses the term American or Americano to refer to people from the United States. Nobody really uses it to refer to other people in the Americas. It is, it is the term, and importantly, it's more or less the only universal one. Now, in Latin America, they do have the term estadounidense, and this one's very valuable, because it's the, essentially the linguistic equivalent of saying United Statesian. Okay, that actually makes way more sense. So the thing that makes us unique is not the word of America, it's the United States bit, except it isn't. So why isn't it? Well, the country that directly borders the United States to the south is the United Mexican States. So United States exists in Mexico's name too. It's just that we refer to them as Mexicans instead of Americans because they're the United States of Mexico or United Mexican States instead of the United States of America. So in both cases, we're referring to it as the thing that they're of. Uh, and this creates an another problem because you see most of the United States was Mexico not that long ago, and nearly as much of the United States was Mexico as there is Mexico. Meaning that many people from the United States have as much, much claim to being Mexico because it's just split in half, right? When you split a country in half, which one gets to use the name is kind of just convention again. So there were a bunch of people who lived in Mexico and then had to refer to themselves as Americans and you can say, but Mexicans can call themselves Amer Americans because they are from America too, just not the United States of America, but they're from America. But most Americans are from Mexico. So in, in a very roundabout way, in, in, it's all very complicated. So who gets the rights to all these names? All of it is by convention. There's more. So Colombia today is the Republic of Colombia. That makes it easy, and no one refers to anybody anywhere as just Republicans. That's just a form of government. Everyone uses it for political parties. No one uses it for nationalities. 
But Colombia used to be the United States of Colombia. So the term United States existed there as well. And Colombia is also slang for America. You can see where this gets complicated. So they were a United States of America in Colombia, but it was Colombia using the term. So they just took the term Colombianos. But you can argue that everyone in the Americas is a Colombian because all the Americas are also the Colombias. This just gets crazy, right? So basically there's this unlimited amount of overlap and everybody has, or, or nearly everyone, has some claim to terms like United States, to Mexico, to Colombia, to America. And the only thing that really works is one, creating completely independent names. That would work most everywhere. But over time, those fall apart. So Mexico started off being an independent country and the people from there were able to say they were from Mexico. But as that country split up, each of its child nations were equally Mexico. It's not like one section was more Mexico than another. If you said it today, right, if you go to Mexico and say, well, which part of Mexico is more Mexico and which part's less Mexico, they'd be like, um, we're all equally Mexico. Or say the same thing in the United States. Which part's more America than another? It doesn't work that way. It's all equally America, or for the most part. There's some places you could argue maybe they're there's a few outliers that may be less America, but that doesn't go over so well and it's not an appropriate way to look at things. So we have to say that all of Mexico today is equally Mexico. It's the only thing that makes sense. But what if the Yucatan was to split off from the rest of Mexico? Which part is Mexico after they split? Both parts were equally Mexico before. And the only way to make a claim that one part remains more Mexico afterwards is to claim that they one part was more Mexico before. So you can't make that claim. So the United States, the Western part of it, or the Western like two thirds, used to be Mexico. It has every bit as much claim to the concept of being Mexican as Mexico today does. But so does Guatemala, Honduras, El Salvador, Nicaragua, Costa Rica. All of them were simply parts of Mexico. And when the country broke apart, they decided they would change their names and Mexico kept calling themselves Mexico. Everyone agreed to this. Everyone was fine with it. But it doesn't change the fact that the people who lived throughout all this region from Costa Rica all the way through to the Canadian border at one point were all equally Mexicans and you can't retroactively take away that identity from anyone anywhere, right? This is just one example. Mexico is one of the most complicated examples to use. And so you end up in this really bizarre situation where we, by convention, refer to people from the current country of Mexico as Mexicans, and people who identify as coming from that country in other Mexican derivative states as Mexicans sometimes, but then not, and many people who are 100% as equally Mexican from original Mexico as those people are today, we don't give any allowance to calling themselves Mexicans at all. It's kind of arbitrary. Uh, and so these terms universally end up being current convention and nothing else. Colombia has the same problem that Venezuela and Panama and Ecuador used to be part of the United States of Colombia. All of them have strong claims to terms like American, Colombian, and United Statesian or Estadounidense. But we use Estadounidense only to refer to people from the United States. When said in Spanish, we use American almost exclusively to refer to people from the United States universally. We use North American when you're south of Mexico to refer to Mexico, the United States, and Canada. If you're in Mexico, you use North American to refer to the United States and Canada. Gringo is normally used for Americans, but sometimes Canadians and sometimes Western Europeans. It gets really, really complicated. And this is true everywhere in the world. And it is always in dispute. Um, and so basically, it's just a really complicated topic. But I don't think people really understand just how complicated it is. It feels like, well, there must be clear words for these things. There are not. Um, there are things like United States citizen. OK. But there's a lot of people who we would say are Americans that we may not be able to prove or agree on being United States citizens. So that is a slightly different thing as well. What if you come from Mexico, but your family moves somewhere else and changes its citizenship? 
Well, yes, you can always say what your citizenship is as so let's say they move to Thailand. They can say, I am a Thai citizen. But when they say, but you're not Thai, no, I'm not Thai, I'm Mexican. What does that mean? But it's from the country of Mexico, presumably, but it could be from any place that used to be Mexico. It's complicated. And sometimes we just have to kind of fund, uh, uh, fudge it, right? And, and kind of accept that we mostly know what people mean. When talking about this, we're kind of stuck that we just don't have additional terminology. So at the end of the day, we have to use terms like American to refer to people from the United States when we're speaking in English. I recommend using, and most people do, Estaduna Dense when speaking in Spanish. That is the clearest form. If you use Americano, yes, everyone knows what you mean, but you can be a little bit more clear and say Estaduna Dense. Uh, and, it's, and it's simply a really complicated topic in every direc direction, every axis of this conversation. And it's not unique to any part of the world. Every part of the world, Europe, Africa, Asia, the islands, everybody, everybody struggles with what are the correct terms to use. Are Australians Europeans? Are Americans Europeans? Right? A lot of people use the term European to refer to an awful large percentage of the United States population. And they um, often do it with hundreds of years separate from, from Europe. And the same for people who are African American. Often it is hundreds of years of separation from Africa. Uh, how long do you go and keep those terms. Why do European and African roots trace maybe 400 years, and we keep using them, but why do Mexican roots disappear after just a year or two, right? That doesn't make, it's inconsistent. And that's, that's one of the things, is that in every case, everything you do ends up being inconsistent. And there's no real way to be consistent. So accepting that inconsistency, unfortunately, is something we have to do. Um, so the takeaway. The takeaway is you have to use these terms. Um, everyone has to accept that these are the terms we have and that we pretty much all know what each other means. That's what we have to work with. We don't have the ability. And, and yes, the names of countries are, are stupid, right? United States of America, that's a terribly generic name. There's actually nothing unique in it, which was kind of by design, but also kind of it seems accidental. Uh, like there's, there's a real lack of identity in the whole thing. But maybe that was intentional, that it was meant to be an ever-increasing space that had no limits. Mexico feels like it should be limited to people within Mexican culture to some degree, just because of the name. I'm not saying anything beyond that. Just the name implies this. Nicaragua, right? I'm here in Nicaragua re re recording this. We can say, well, Nicaragua could, could gain some land somewhere. And you'd say, but those people aren't Nicaraguans. It's weird that they're inside Nicaragua. And you say, you're right. But it's just the name that makes you feel that way. But in the United States, if they add territory that is culturally, historically, linguistically separate from America, from the United States of America as it stood before that acquisition, you say, well, it's just a generic thing. The United States of America, it can go anywhere. Except it does get awkward because Hawaii is not part of America. So people from Hawaii are called Americans, but they're not from any part of America. Same with people from Guam or American Samoa, right? So that gets really weird. And what about Puerto Rico? Are they Americans? Well, they're Americans nationality-wise for sure, but are they Americans from the American continents? No, they're not from an American continent. They're from the, from the islands, they touch the Caribbean, so they're Caribbean. We often say the Americas and Caribbean, and some people consider the Caribbean part of the Americas, but not everyone. Right? So it goes on and on with just how complex these things get. And so we, to some degree, have to separate that the terms are national and regional, and sometimes they're historical, and sometimes they're current, and we just kind of have to use context uh, to figure out what they mean. And if you think that's complicated, wait until you deal with the Republic of the Congo and the Democratic, Re oh, wow, the Republic of the Congo and the Democratic Republic of the Congo. We used to call them Congo and Zaire, and that was really, really clear. But now, Zaire is what we normally call the Congo. People s switched what they called the Congo, and the country called the Congo has been forgotten. That's weird. So that kind of stuff happens too, and, and we leave that out. But these things happen everywhere, and it's just it's crazy complicated. And then the Central African Republic, what are they called, right? <laughs> like. There's probably actually a name, and I just don't know what it is, but it's complicated, right? So, yeah, that's, uh, that's kind of my explanation as to why we use the words we do and how complicated it is. All right, on to the day. 
All right, so for the day, today was a big homework day with me helping Lisa with stuff. So we did a lot of math today. That's coming along really well. I found that uh, her and I working together every day on her math, because what she was doing is saving it up until the end of the week and then trying to do it all at once. That's a terrible process for anything and for a subject that she's really struggling with, oh, it's the worst. So now we're doing it together. Every day I'm making it that when she gets up in the morning, we just do it as the start of the day and get it out of the way. And then she has the whole day not to worry about it. And while she hates getting up and doing it, it's making a huge difference for her. And so we did that today and got a lot done and it was really, really good. And uh, then the girls and I, uh, they've been wanting to do this. They pulled out this uh, board game that they have that's a murder mystery cold case. And so you, you open up the box set, and I, I have to say, it was actually really fantastic. Uh, you open it up, and it had like real newspaper clippings, not like from an actual newspaper, but like printed on real newspaper, so it looked just like real newsprint. And it had a bunch of photographs in it, and a bunch of case files, and there's like no instructions. Well, there's a tiny bit, but basically no instructions. You just go through all this case material and have to figure out a cold case based on all these clues that you got going on. And it was a lot of fun. We brought another table into their bedroom and set up, because this is where we played in there in the air conditioning and uh, with the cat. And we set up a, the big white table like the other one in my office. And we laid out all the stuff and we read through together each of the files. And we talked about all the different things that we thought happened and who did what and went through the whole thing. It was really cool. It was honestly a lot of fun. It was probably one to two hours that we spent doing that. And there was three objectives. Uh, so you had to uh, like prove that the person they had put in jail was innocent then you had to figure out some other clue and then you had to prove who actually did it and, uh, and, and then you didn't have to make him confess but then you go to a website put in the evidence that you had collected uh, and if you got it right then it showed you a video of them confessing and the, and the whole thing it was really really well done it was a lot of fun the, the downside is you can only play it once so you get this whole box set and then it's spent like what do you do with it after that you've already done it you know who did it um, and we did find a clue that we thought was really significant we're like this totally proves that they put him away on evidence that was that was false right like completely made up evidence and uh that that ended up not being it so we found a mistake which of course is the risk right that you find a detail that's really important that they just overlooked um and uh and so we're like oh well that sucks that we found a really critical detail and they missed that they they had missed that detail so we were sure that we had the right answer and it was something else but uh for, for one of the clues but we had a really good time that was a lot of fun so that was our that was our big thing today Ooh, that, that is a lot of wind i'm doing my best to keep the wind off of the microphone but wow it is super windy it's been super windy all week we're just in that part of the summer so it's gonna be hard for me to get outside and do the walk arounds and stuff because uh it's just it just ends up being so much wind noise. But anyway, that was our day. Please remember to like and subscribe. If you want to support the channel, get down there in the comments. And you can uh, buy me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash Scott Allen Miller. Like and subscribe. Post this on social media. Tell your friends about the show. And of course, get in the comments. Leave, leave your comments. Ask your questions. All that stuff down there. It's fantastic when everybody gets involved. I will see all of you tomorrow.